the U.S. Architect of Disaster. It is fascinating to watch U.S. presidents as they call names and promise destruction, especially so soon after the flood of disasters that have been waged throughout the Middle East. Iraq is a social, economic, environmental, and spiritual basket case. Libya is little better. Both are horrific examples of U.S. interventions that have plunged both societies into deadly hellscapes, places of religious strife, kidnappings, broken institutions, and rape. For the U.S. and its so-called allies are good at destruction of governments. Reconstruction? Not so much. Now the American way lumbers into Syria, ostensibly to weaken ISIS, lately called the Islamic State. As in Iraq and later Libya, the U.S. and its ignoble allies are in contempt of the people who are invariably referred to coldly as collateral damage. The Arab so-called allies cover for the imperialists who are actually collaborators with Western foreigners. All the rap about training armies? If the U.S. couldn't do it in 12 years, a few months are simply laughable. This means that the U.S. and Western military efforts will continue indefinitely for months, for years, perhaps. And to what end? Democracy? An end to terrorism? Hardly. For one thing, imagine the various and sundry members of the so-called coalition. Should it surprise us that with the exception of France, there's hardly a democracy among them. This war, like the Iraq war before it, promised heaven but delivered hell. It was and is a disaster that promises more suffering for the Arabs who had the immense misfortune of being born in lands where lakes of oil bubbled beneath them. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. <laughs> you know, I almost, you almost, you almost compelled to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I was, it brings out, I'm your host, Yang and Krumah. This is The Arena. You can catch us on YouTube, all one word, The Arena 2013. Man, we have an interesting show, an interesting panel, bringing it to you again like we always do. But like we do at the arena, we allow everyone to intro introduce themselves. So I'll start with my right, at my right. Hi, my name is Diane Mathewitz. I am a member of the movement to end Israeli apartheid Georgia. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I'm Kevin Karen. Uh, back from last week, I'm also, I'm with the Georgia Peace and Justice Coalition. But this week, I'm, I'm here to help out with some interviewing on the, our topic today. Excellent. Uh, my name is Dawn Gibson. I am also a member of the Movement to End Israeli Apartheid Georgia, and I represent that organization on Georgia Peace and Justice Coalition Steering Committee. I be your brother, Gidon Ben Yashara Al, your servant. Thank you for allowing me in the arena. Thank you for being here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hey, let's get to it. And, and since Kevin, since you said you're starting to sound, getting us, uh, helping us with the special guest host today. <laughs> now let's let you do your thing. Sure. Um, so I, I brought this up a couple weeks ago. We mm -hmm. were talking about kind of connecting uh, some of the struggles that were going on in uh, Gaza and uh, the, the Israeli attack on Gaza mm -hmm. um, and, and connecting that to some of the things going on here in the United States, uh, things like in, what happened in Ferguson um, and what's still ongoing in Ferguson. And, uh, and so in order to bring that together, I wanted to um, invite a couple people to talk about GILI, which is called the uh, Georgia International Law Enforcement Exchange. Mm. Um, so that, that actually connects with both of these issues very well. And uh, with that said, I'd like to ask, could, could uh, you, Dawn, maybe introduce us? Tell us what GILI is. Okay. Um, GILI is a law enforcement exchange. It's an international law enforcement exchange where um, police officers, mostly uh, senior officers and police chiefs, go to uh, another country to learn different tactics. But um, the the relationship that Mia G and the Progressive Student Alliance, uh, a student organization at Georgia State University that I was also a member of, focused on was the relationship with Israel. So, um, which is its most intimate relationship. 
So our, our, you know, our police chiefs here in Georgia, some even outside of the state of Georgia, not as many, but definitely um, there were also administrators such as like uh, people through maybe the FBI and GBI, I think mm -hmm. that's what we found through our research, went to uh, Israel to learn counterterrorism tactics. Mm. And then um, there would be um, Israeli police who would come here to the United States, to Georgia State, to learn drug reinforcement tactics. So would they, would they actually be patrolling with officers and riding in, you know, like in our neighborhoods? That is something that we haven't discovered. One of the things that is troubling about this program, besides the obvious relationship with Israel, is the fact that it is not transparent and they're not mm -hmm. forthcoming with what happens in the program. Mm. So we don't. So we don't even know. You know, even though it's a, we know that it's Israeli police. It is possible, and I say possible. Mm -hmm. You know, because this could be wrong. That you know, some people from the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, mm -hmm. might be even coming over as well. They won't even let us know when these these exchange students mm -hmm. are here in the United States. They keep a lot of that information quite uh, under wraps. Yeah. Diane, why why do you think why do you think that we're sending that we're working that, that they're having this law enforcement exchange? What's the significance of that? I, I wanted to say a little bit more about the founding Please. of this. So it, it started in 1992, mm -hmm. and it's actually on the campus of Georgia State. Mm. And a professor by the name of Robert Friedman is who actually helped put this together. And so what you have is a state institution uh, being the go-between or the host or the developer of a program that, as we said, brings Israeli police to the United States and takes all kinds of police forces here in the state of Georgia to Israel. And this can include people from the smallest of towns, mm -hmm. like the one that just finished uh, this summer, a couple months ago, included the Rockdale County Sheriff Department, really? Conyers Police Department, mm -hmm. Pine Lake, Mm. Police oh, from Pine Lake. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Pine, Pine Lake. 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 We aim Pooler. Pooler. Sandy Springs, Rome, and Tifton. These were the police departments. Then we had sheriffs from Fulton, Hall, Telfar counties, hmm. plus people from the state departments of different, um, like the corrections, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. investigation, natural resources, public safety. These are the folks who went to Israel mm -hmm. to learn counterterrorism. Mm. Now, someone might ask, mm -hmm. Pine Lake mm -hmm. needs right. to have, and I think it, it goes in line with what we're talking about of the militarization of mm. the police, police as well. Mm -hmm. So that Israel is uh, probably world known mm -hmm. for its, um, what do we want to call it? <laughs> <laughs> World riot killing for it's, for it's international really killers for its <laughs> uh, uh, surveillance and police state. I don't mm. know any other way to put it. Absolutely. Uh, both because of the the IDF, which is the army, mm -hmm. which operates in the occupied territories mm -hmm. and commits so many different kinds of human mm -hmm. rights right. abuses. Their prisons, which mm -hmm. are notorious mm -hmm. for torture, and then you have the the police. Mm -hmm. uh, many of whom come out of the IDF, because mm -hmm. in Israel, every male, or every person Those over the age of 18 has to go through the Some military. Mm -hmm. So you have a police force that has been largely, totally powerful uh, in, in enforcing an occupation. Mm -hmm. And so those then are the police that are so-called training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. level. Oh, and campus police. Mm -hmm. Georgia oh, State Campus goodness. Police wow. have gone to Israel to they learn do counter mm -hmm. terrorism. Mm -hmm. So what is this speaking to? I mean, should, you know, as, as, and especially for the people listening, what is this speaking to? What is the, the bigger picture? What are they saying about, are we just, you know, are we beating around the bush? Is it going to be some type of lockdown? Are, we, are they ready to declare martial law? Is this the first step of preparation for that, for uh, the peoples over here in the Americas? Is this, so I mean, what is like the bigger, the bigger picture? What is, like I'm saying, what is the, the meat of this. Giddy, I know you're burning to go, man. Well, you're absolutely yeah. correct, sir. This is, uh, <laughs> don't be shy, guys. Don't say it, man. Say what it is. You already said it. Okay. It is 
counterterrorism mm -hmm. because they create their enemies and then they train worldwide the people who are in line with militarizing and policing the world. See, that one world government concept has to have a root, mm -hmm. and that root is America. But you have to understand when we talk about occupation, look at Israel, 1948. They came and occupied a land with the United States, Europe backing them. Absolutely. They took over. Mm -hmm. And now America, who has came over here, took over. Obviously, they have an incestuous relationship. But when we look at the issue of them coming and teaching the police of the, you know, in small pooler, mm -hmm. Pine Lake Police. Right, right. What we're talking about is Rex 84, the Patriot Act. We're talking about homeland security, mm -hmm. what they are preparing for. And then also one of the beloved sisters at our congregation referenced, she said, you know, I've been riding by military installations and they have hundreds of coffins. Mm -hmm. And they had the coffins sitting up front but then when people start bringing the world's attention or our community attention to the coffins, they pull military vehicles in front of those coffins. So when I talk about policing and I think of Israel, I think of Mossad, the high elite police force. Yeah. Because these are the people who the, they're really training to be like. It's not just the person that walks on the beat on the street. What you're talking about is worldwide policing sure. and the intellect that it takes to propagandize. This, this, so this isn't just for that population. ISIS threat? You know, no, so no, they created the ISIS, ISIS threat. No, so I think we should talk about that yeah, because absolutely. this program was started in 1992. Mm -hmm. Now, we have had, all of us have seen the... Um, Al-Qaeda? The uh, denigration, the diminishment of, oh. of, of civil liberties and Correct. civil rights yeah. in this Thank country, you. and they do it all under the basis of... 20 of 9-11. Of yes. But this yes. started in 92. Mm -hmm. And I think from my perspective, part of this is the, the preparation uh, of a system mm -hmm. which very frankly sees worldwide that people are rising up, mm -hmm. that yes. they're really not interested anymore in being exploited exactly. and oppressed, exactly. and there's resistance that's taking place. So, yes, yeah, so why is Pooler, Sandy Springs, mm -hmm. police, yes. Pine Lake Police going? I do believe that it is part of an effort to um, develop, but not just within the police force, mm -hmm. a mentality Thank you. of really controlling unrest and, and keep pushing us back yes. to, into subservience yes. through the fear mm -hmm. of, this, of this really now high-tech weaponry mm -hmm. that they use. Right. Um, but I also want to say that I think it goes hand in glove with the U.S. foreign policy mm, towards Israel. Absolutely. Which is for Israel to essentially be like the gendarme, the... the Pit bull. The, Good word. Um, <laughs> exactly. The, um, you know, the one with the big stick yeah, exactly. in the Middle East mm -hmm. to make sure that the oppressed Arab and Muslim stay oppressed. Right. And that the oil keeps, keeps flowing. flowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so on the, on the other side, then Israeli police supposedly come here to learn um, community policing and drug <laughs> enforcement. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into how it is that we discovered mm -hmm. this um, mm -hmm. entity yes. that existed on Georgia State's campus, mm. which is largely funded by corporate money from, mm -hmm. name all the corporations, Georgia Power, Cox, 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 Cox Government. Is, um, and their board of directors. Exactly. The same, so that you see this collusion Absolutely. between those, what we call the 1%, mm -hmm. yes. and the militarized police force. Hmm. I heard and with that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I heard you mention uh, Cox Communications. Um, would would you be able to talk about Cox Communications? Are they uh, associated with the newspaper in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. They own it. They own the newspaper <laughs> in Atlanta. Okay, so so this corporation that owns the newspaper in Atlanta and the information that people are and getting many, on it and many many other things and many other things yes. is is very invested in this program that uh, is teaching policing. Yeah, when, think about it. You're this uh, multi-billionaire or you're yes. this corporation that employs tens of thousands of people and pays them low wages and mm -hmm. is always making them work harder for less. Exactly. 
And you look around the world and you see uh, the mass of people. Mm -hmm. Right, Goyim. And you say to yourself, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're going to come after me. <laughs> Sooner or later, <laughs> you can fool them so many times. Exactly. So I think, um, you know, not to, you know, to be real crazy about this, but I do believe that the whole emphasis on the militarizing of police, mm, exactly. whether it's in Little Ferguson mm -hmm. or Pooler yes. or wherever, is in fact a, con a, a feeling, an, a, an awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of impending doom. Let me say oh, this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Doom for them. Uh, yes. <laughs> Money. Well, now raise let me <laughs> say this as well. In the outlying areas, some of these places that you're talking about, there have been more killings of so-called woolly-haired, melanated young men yeah. than you've ever mm -hmm. known because they're not in the immediate metropolitan mm -hmm. area. Yeah. We hadn't heard about it. Yeah. But they had a police captain talked about the increased number of killings. So what we find is the type of mentality, the militarization, the uh, fact that there is a zero tolerance concept with the police force. Mm -hmm. Would you say that comes from the training and this relationship between America and Israel and how they plan to dominate the world itself? Well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> woo, okay. Because actually, um, I'll, I'll answer that, and I also want to um, answer what uh, Yanga asked. Um, first of all, when we think about police violence on black and brown people, it's not you know, confined to just black men, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about black women. Um, definitely, um, you know, there's plenty of evidence of even police what, forces. The, the, um, yeah, against, against black trans officer was just, women yeah. as well. Yeah. So, and yeah. definitely with what Diane was saying before, that the police, you know, in my opinion, the police exist, you know, not only just to keep, you know, the former slave population, you know, contained and controlled and, and other brown populations, but also dissent. Yes. And it has always crushed dissent. Mm -hmm. You know, people, it's so funny, people say, wow, Ferguson's just like the 60s. I'm just like, well, well, guys, come on. You know, like... You know, there's also the G20 protests in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. of several years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, watching it is like watching a dystopian sci-fi. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the police literally occupying the streets, tear gassing people, yeah, dogs exactly, and yeah. everything. Exactly. And this was in 2010. <clears throat> Hello. And so 2014, what do we have? We have an increased militarization. They've become more effective. Exactly. The police have always been militarized mm -hmm. to some extent. Of course. Um, but in terms of kind of like why is it, I, I, think, I think when we talk about increased deaths of, of people of color, what we need to realize is that we're depending on the mainstream media. Right. It was owned by the corporation. Right. Thank you. The Propaganda. deaths have always happened. Yes. You know, the only reason why, like for instance, you know, some of you might remember Rodney King. Yes. The reasons why we were able to talk about Rodney King was why? Because it was on video. Video. Same the late thing, Rodney King. Same thing with, um, um, you know, with, with Trayvon Martin to some, some degree. Yeah, we absolutely. have the, the, some, some audio oh, of, of, of the death. Oscar Grant, mm -hmm. you know, so we know, and unfortunately, this is a truth that a lot of us of African descent, that a lot of, you know, unfortunately, other peoples as well in this country have learned is that these deaths, these things have always happened. Mm -hmm. I would challenge and ask, you know, my brothers of African descent, if, if you guys remember, mm -hmm. being taught how to act with the police. Absolutely. I remember sure, sure. my yeah. own father told me that right. he and his brother, like, if you said you're kidding, that's resisting arrest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain ways that you yes. are trained to behave with the police. Absolutely. So then think about this exchange. Mm -hmm. So you've got an exchange with the police force here in the United States that has a history mm -hmm. of keeping a particular population control Abuse. and also not and also has crushed dissent, especially with the labor union, Thank the you. labor movement. Yes. Mm -hmm and with other movements in this like country, yes. having an exchange with Israel, right. you know, the state of Israel, which is also trying to keep a population no contained, you know, ethnic right. cleansing, whatever. Right. 
not to be all nerdy and ghostbusters y but it sounds like the key master and the gatekeeper being come to get, coming right. together. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, but basically these two <laughs> like these like these two entities should not be working together. Yeah, this right. is there's nothing, you know, uh, when you're talking about community policing, you know, they're not talking about what the people mean about community exactly. policing. They're talking about what the state. So we're exactly. talking about a police state mm -hmm. exchanging Bingo. sort of like, you know, tactics on how Teach. how do you keep your people down. That's okay, right. Okay, this is how we keep up. Willie Lynch down. thing. And I'll stop. Mm -hmm. No, don't <laughs> stop. Keep <laughs> on. See, that's, that's what you're dealing stop. with is spiritual powers on exceedingly high places. Well, that I, man, that I gun in that brother's face. <laughs> 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 it's not spiritual. It's not. But what she's talking about is the incestuous relationship between America and Israel. And, of course, the natural mind would say, what is the relationship and why? You better get a real revelation on this right here. now, ain't you? I'm just saying to yeah. you, it's a spiritual thing, and the power that they are invoking has to do with demonic power. It has to do with oppression, militarization, incarceration, and total annihilation of the population of dissenters. So right. when you look at this mentality, it can't be anything but demonic. I, I I agree with that, but I, I think that our response, the, the question is going to be, our response has to be more than just the spiritual. No offense to the spiritual, it's going to have to be more because African people here in America have been spiritual for so long. But for that's so, what's so going to save. See, so, now let me show you because so, what you just said is time, correct now. Because like, I, I mean, Let's tell it, young yeah, <laughs> our relationship, our relationship with, and what's strange about this with Africans in America is like you adequately put, Don, um, our relationship with the police have not been a good one. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? We know we've been taught as a, uh, an African man, a black man here in America, like you said, we've been taught when we get pulled women. over, and black women have been taught, and I'm finding out I've been taught the same thing. When we get pulled over, just automatic heart rate. I mean, mm -hmm. you can be legit, driver's mm -hmm. license legit, nothing in the car, mm -hmm. and just sweat pours down. Mm -hmm. You know, hands on the steering wheel, don't, you know, don't reach too fast for you. You gotta let them know it's in the glove, man. So, um, but what, what, what we're looking for, though, is, um, uh, like we were saying, we understand cinema. So you're saying that they understand what, like you were saying, Diane, that one of the things that they understand that the way that they're going, the way that the system is going and the state is going, that naturally, that there's going to be an uprising of the people. Okay. So they're preparing, they're preparing for that ahead of time. Exactly. I so how did you, how did you, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. How, so how did you come about? Excellent. All right, so <laughs> all right, so the movement to end Israeli apartheid Georgia actually flowed out of, if you remember, there was, you know, there've been multiple times that Israel has launched, uh, like a shock and awe, mm -hmm. an incredible, devastating attack on Gaza, which mm -hmm. is this. People should know is this a very small strip mm -hmm. of land uh, uh, that has uh, 1.7 million people just really close together, mm -hmm. that's totally blockaded. Mm -hmm. Israel doesn't let. Uh, people out through the sea, mm. they can't get out through the side mm. that uh, borders Israel, and then they weren't able to really get out through the side that borders Egypt. And so in 2008 and 2009, there was another one of these horrible massacres. Mm. And this, we had multiple demonstrations that took place at the Israeli consulate mm -hmm. in the hundreds and hundreds of people expressing the outrage of people here in Atlanta mm -hmm. about what Israel was doing. And we wanted, also it wasn't just what Israel was doing because every bomb and every bullet and every airplane American was aid. from the United States. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, supplied by USAID. Mm -hmm. So following the so-called end of that assault, uh, there was a real strong sense that we needed to continue the educational work, the agitational work, the mobilization work to uh, make sure that we just didn't respond to a vicious attack, but that we went to the root or we tried to respond to what Palestinians were calling for. Mm -hmm. And Palestinians were calling for boycott, divestment, and sanctions, mm -hmm. very much in the same mm -hmm. mode as the South African anti-apartheid mm -hmm. um, fighters had done, mm -hmm. which was that they were saying that we know that this, uh, government mm -hmm. in Israel is sustained uh, so strongly, so heavily, mm -hmm. uh, so intrinsically mm -hmm. by U.S. military aid and U.S. diplomatic support Absolutely. and corporate entities mm -hmm. that are invested there. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that you go after these entities mm -hmm. that are based here in the United States and you shame them, you expose them, mm -hmm. you 
denounce them mm -hmm. for their relationship with what is really an apartheid supremacist occupation. Yes. Uh, teach, teach, uh, teach. teach. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. So, so what had happened was, as, as all of us said, people who were students at Georgia State had no idea this institution was there. Mm, sure. no, none of us mm. knew. Um, and so what had happened was, of course, people remember Catherine Johnston had oh, been absolutely. murdered. Yes. And uh, this was this despicable crime. Despicable. Com Could you tell the story of that sure. crime? She was a 92-year-old woman mm. right. who uh, lived uh, um, on Neal Street. On Neal Street, exactly. Uh, she lived, she was a pillar of the community. Beautiful woman. Um, she and her sister lived mm -hmm. in this house. Her mm -hmm. sister had died. Mm -hmm. um, the rogue Atlanta police That's that had right. this drug no squad mm -hmm. um, got a no-knock warrant exactly. based on totally, totally phony information, mm -hmm. went to her house mm. and broke the door down. Exactly. She had an old rusty revolver. She had, that was gone far exchange. And she, and it was dark. Right. Mm -hmm. She had been preparing Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. It was the day before Thanksgiving. Mm. Uh, and so she fired at right. these in men the right. who, were, on Neal Street. who right. were coming I mean, in through the Hello. door. They shot her 39 times. Oh, wow. And mm. when they got in there, mm. discovered it was a 92-year-old mm -hmm. elderly black woman. Exactly. They planted drugs. Planted drugs on mm -hmm. and Handcuffed her. And left her left her to die. die I don't on think the floor. she was still dead. That's that case brought me out. Yes. I went down to the Capitol. I was so angry, but I wasn't angry at anybody there. But they <clears> perceived <throat> it as such. And I was trying to find a meeting. And these females that was at the security guard saw me. I was at from work. Me and my brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we, we were just. I was so outraged. And what they did was profile me and lied and said that I had done something wrong in the Capitol and had the police come and arrest me. I was wrong. What I didn't do is I disobeyed a legal, uh, uh, a lawful command to show my ID. I said I had to show it when I first came in. I'm here trying to find the meat. Six dudes, they, they herniated me. It was because of Catherine John. That story. It, but see, yeah. our people keep voting. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Go Anyhow, ahead. so... so um, you know, it took years, yeah, yeah, and it yeah. took a lot, but eventually the whole lie that mm. the police had concocted exactly. to cover themselves on this heinous murder. Some cops actually went to trial. It was in my personal experience. It was the first time I'd ever known that police actually were put on trial for mm. killing somebody. Two of them went and served some time. About six years. But it, was, it wasn't on the charge of murder. No. It right. was... Uh, Trumped up. Uh, well, it's a so, minor like they so disobeyed yeah, regulations. Yeah, throw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, throw, throw us a little But anyway, you know so what happened is when we, I, I actually was the one who found this little tiny article in the Atlanta Constitution mm -hmm. about some police who had just returned from Israel from this Gilly program. Mm. And, and in Miyagi, we had been trying to find a way to connect the viciousness and the brutality of what was happening to Palestinians mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, by the, under the occupation and just by the uh, state of Israel mm -hmm. uh, uh, inherent racism, to, to make a connection with the same struggle here Absolutely. in Atlanta and in the United States. Absolutely. So, so everybody was very conscious, I think, about what had happened with Katherine Johnston, yes. this phony baloney, mm -hmm. no knock, mm -hmm. the lies. Mm -hmm. And here was this program with Israel. And so that was how mm -hmm. we started the Gilly campaign to go after first the trying to get it off the Georgia State campus, mm -hmm. because this is taxpayer mm -hmm. space. Oh, this is how they do it. Taxpayer Absolutely. space, this is how they a do taxpayer it. paid you, Professor, you, you mm -hmm. voted for the people that told you they were going to hang people in to kill you, to kill you, and you voted for it. And so, even though there is a lot, most of the money that sustains these trips and stuff is corporate, exactly. and they they are lauded by the Georgia Assembly, mm -hmm. by all the politicians. Exactly, uh, they're just cozy, cozy with them. Um, but that was how that was how it started. 
Mm. What a power. So, very, very powerful. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. Don, but I have a question <laughs> coming to you, Don. Being, you know, um, and when you know a lot of our viewers, especially on YouTube, are Africans here in America, black, black Americans, you know, we go through all the things we come. Yeah. How does it? <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> it is what it is. Right, it is what it is. Um, so a lot of viewers. So coming from you, how does, first of all, how does this affect us specifically? And why should us as Africans here in America be concerned and how do we get involved and where can we start to really to, to do some things? Well, um, I think I can probably begin, you know, as, as a person of African descent, kind of like how I became interested in the campaign. Um, one of the things that Mia G and the Progressive Student Alliance hosted was a screening of Slingshot Hip Hop which you know is, is basically a, a documentary about the Palestinian hip hop group Dem. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that stands for the Da Arabian MCs. You know they're pretty awesome and some other. Um, but watching it, first of all, there's the connection with hip hop. You know that alone mm -hmm. is is an intimate connection with uh, blacks in this country. But also some of the narratives that I heard from my brothers and sisters sounded very very much like the same narratives that we have here. Mm -hmm. The difference for me was that they knew it was because they were Palestinian that they were being oppressed. Sometimes I feel like black Americans here, they think that, well, because I didn't do this properly, I didn't do this, you know, because we're trained, you know, make sure the hands are right, in position, right. whatever. And so for me, you know, my t-shirt says, we are all Palestinians. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. I believe very strongly that, you know, my struggle is connected to the Palestinian brothers and sisters across mm -hmm. the sea. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there's also a history of black liberation struggles being in solidarity with the Palestinians. So for me, that is, that is, there's, that is more than enough reason to be involved. Now this police exchange program. First of all, police, exchange, Israel, <laughs> oppression. Black people need to be on that, mm -hmm. you know, because right. Um, you know, I've done some cop watch in this city, not a lot, not as much as um, my other comrades, but I've done enough to know that, you know, in these neighborhoods where there are a lot of poor black people, the police are always there. Mm -hmm. I remember in the uh, Edgewood Courts neighborhood here in Atlanta mm -hmm. that um, they were trying to do, I guess, sort of like an officer friendly type thing, sort mm -hmm. of like, hi, we're the police. And one sister was like, y'all shot my cousin last week. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, which is a reality. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, they, you know, that's why sometimes when people are just like, when is this going to stop happening? It's never stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, there are police murders all the time. Um, the Malcolm X grassroots movement uh, published Operation Ghetto Storm. Yeah. Every 28 hours, yeah. you know, a person is killed by yeah. police. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. thing is, is that we really, really need to pay attention to that. I know that that's, that's traumatizing to know that, you know, somebody in your family, somebody that you love can be hurt, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they, they will tag anybody. So, yes, you should be concerned that they're learning how to really especially break you. Mm -hmm, right. This is important to know. This is, it's important to know that there are struggles across the world. Sometimes in the United States, I feel that we're too isolated. Mm -hmm. um, that we, you know, we're just like, well, we're just concerned about what happens here. Mm -hmm. And I remember at an event where I was speaking on a panel, you know, this one brother was expressing why should he care about the Palestinians and stuff like that. And perhaps he was trying to imply that this was a hobby uh, of, of white people or mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like, no, <laughs> right, <laughs> you right. know, especially since, you know, some of these cops that, you know, like the, 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 these are the leadership. This mm -hmm. is not just, mm -hmm. you know, rank and file. This mm -hmm. is the leadership. So not just, um, you know, through our research, we discovered, you know, the former police chief, Richard Pennington, was on the exchange. Mm. Current police chief, George Turner, has mm. been on the exchange. DBI director, Keenan. Exactly. And is a board member. So these are, so these are people that, you know, they bring, you know, because when, you know, what is it? You know, people who work at a corporation, your boss goes to something, they come back and they implement mm. policy. Really? Like, you know, these are people that maintain an open air prison. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're bringing back that information to, you know, further oppress Absolutely. the black and brown peoples in this country and the poor too, mm -hmm. and to crush movements of dissent, of resistance in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. You better be concerned. Absolutely. You need to be concerned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, let me just say this, uh, Victor Hill, 
first of all, as one who's been on the other side of the bars, mm -hmm. you know, I've been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I've been hurt by the police. Uh, Right in this parking lot, yeah. <laughs> I was arrested for having a flat tire. So you went through your, well, you went through what we call <laughs> wow. your, your ghetto rights of passage. Yeah, you know, you've been in black in America. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't been behind that car. With Sue Ann Taylor standing out there telling yeah. him it's okay. He can, his, he's a producer here. Yeah. They arrested me and took my van and my trailer. Yeah. Now I said, oh no, this is going to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Victor Hill, however is a, I believe, the example, and he's probably been on the exchange, mm -hmm. but he is one of many that are beginning and have realized that that needs to be changed. But when Victor Hill went in and tried to, uh, he did, he fired every mm, in there that was part of the collusion and corruption. They made him hire everyone on back. Mm -hmm. Then you have your boy Ted Jackson, right here in Fulton County. He has a different mentality. He has sons. He still worked for the white man. He still uh, in league. He had to take all the oaths and all, and, and, you know, he's still yeah. down. He got the blue coat, but he's trying to promote policies where uh, recreation and other things are being infused in the community. So those are two that I would say, but they're not going to change the system. The Bible says, who can make war with the beast? So you're not going to change, just like the School of the Americas. Who's it's not like, change I, wanted to, Who, I wanted to go to the School of America <laughs> till you find out it was the School of Killers that they have school set the up. Assassins. The School mm -hmm. of the Assassins. Right. Let me because say this, That's though. what America Let does. me jump in there and say go this. Ahead, the views and comments. <laughs> <laughs> Comcast, the staff, its affiliates, its sponsors, they are, they are strictly the views and comments of the arena and its panelists and its guests and its hosts. The uh, guys uh, the guys the guys the guys <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, actually, yeah, actually yeah, you know, truth well, be told, Kevin looked out. She was just like, yo, make sure you're in the meeting. Well, sure we were talking the about the police. I just yeah, thought yeah, it yeah, should be. Right. <laughs> I was like, yo, do the disclaimer. Yes, sir. So, all right. So, bro. anyway, I mean, in conclusion, just briefly, those are, I believe, things that the police see. When did you have to start putting body cams on the police? Mm. And you already got cameras on the cars. When you have to police the police, you've already lost the battle. So you think you think it's a lost battle? It is lost. Why? Because they're fraternal order. They have secret codes. They will kill you, your mama, Catherine Johnson. So what do you? I mean, so what do you do? Just you cannot. You well, can't do. You just pray your way out of it. Well, the the the, the children of the Most High are going to be sacrificed <laughs> like the king. Man, come on. Man. Okay. <laughs> I have a, I, I, to be perfectly Yo, honest, I have a reaction to because uh, I noticed that a lot of people are like, "Yeah, good. They're going to be." cameras on the cops and stuff like that. But um, I actually believe that uh, some of you might know about Cop Watch, which is basically um, people in the communities being empowered to watch the yeah. police. And so for me, that is an opportunity to, instead of relying on the state to right. monitor their own police, which, yes. you know, right. come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, editors, but yeah. at least you have the people who, you know, because when we do Cop Watch, you mm. know, we go through Know Your Rights training. Mm. We also, you know, when we say we're just observing, we're not trying to have a conversation with the, you know, basically you have a backup camera, you have, you know, it depends on how you organize your local cop watch. But it's empowering, it's nonviolent, and it's confrontational. Right. Yes. You know, it's sort of like, please, you know, can I have your name and your mm. badge number? I think here in Atlanta it's your assignment number. Oh, okay. no, they but will the take your is, camera. Well, actually, just to let you know, um, some of you may or may re not remember the raid on the Eagle, on the uh, on the gay bar, the yeah. Eagle, mm -hmm. and that was the Red Dogs. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the, run every drug dealer yeah, out of Red Georgia. Dog, right, okay, right, right. everybody should know Red Dogs. Yeah, so Goody Mob, Goody Mob, Goody Mob, Goody Mob, Red Dogs. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, two. Yeah. Come on, Red Dogs. Can you explain what Red Dog is for anybody who who doesn't know? Doesn't know Red Dog because you're not from the hood. Yeah, I know. Well, the purpose of Red Dog is essentially to make sure that you know the uncontrollable drug traffic mm -hmm. is maintained by our wonderful boys in blue. Yeah. The Red Dog. Um, Red Dog. But they're known for you know. In Beat fact, down. I believe that um, yeah. it was uh, many members of Red Dog who murdered Katherine Johnston. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing where they might, and I think uh, Mia G actually did an open records request um, mm -hmm. on sort of like you know Red Dog's greatest hits. You know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like their own violations, yeah. and guess what? They Punches. actually did some things wrong. Whoa. <laughs>
Y'all so stupid. But anyway, the thing is, is that it's important for us to make sure. Well, okay. So Lambda Legal sued because this is Atlanta and that's not going to fly. At all. Okay. They're not going to bring back some old school. We're no, going to start, not, you know, no. because Stonewall was a riot mm -hmm. against police. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So now the police, you know, they, they came in and allegedly there were drugs. Allegedly there was sex work or whatever. The mm -hmm. charges were never really concrete, mm -hmm. but they made a bunch of patrons lay on the ground, took mm -hmm. their IDs, mm -hmm. said all sorts of homophobic right, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, somebody was going to get sued over that. Mm -hmm. sure. My friend, uh, who's who's one of the cop watch of East Atlanta, his camera his camera was actually confiscated and damaged by the police. Mm. So at it. the same time, when the judgment came through for um, the people of the Eagle, he also received a judgment for his camera as somebody mm. working with cop watch. Right. So there right. is a relationship with cop watch in Atlanta. And when I say relationship, I don't mean that they work together. Right. I mean that they know they can't mess with cop watch. Mm. So for the most part, there is a policy that you must, if you are asked what your assignment number and your name is, you must provide it. And if they have you on camera refusing to give it, you'll get in trouble, but I'm, that's the official word. I don't know if you'll actually right. get in trouble. But so what, is, how would, if for our viewers out there interested in, in uh, becoming a part of Cop Watch, how would they go about? Excellent. Well, if you are in Atlanta, you can go to, I think it's Cop Watch of East Atlanta, and that's the word Cop Watch, O-E-A dot org. I believe that's their website. Of course, or if, you, Google it. if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, you know, they, you know, the people in, in this, in this uh, collective, they do know your rights trainings and cop watch trainings basically anywhere you ask them it's for no charge i've participated in some of these tra in this these trainings too but it's important well it's also important to know you know what was an earlier cop watch group wasn't the black panthers for self-defense right? you know <laughs> cop watch group so and what happened to them and so well what, what happens to any revolutionary <laughs> group but the thing is is that if you don't watch because I'm pretty sure Mike Brown wasn't cop watch. Exactly. And I'm pretty sure Oscar Grant wasn't cop watch. Thank you. So, thank you. Or, I, or Ayana or, or but, anybody, you know, was, wasn't cop watch. Let me ask this, and we're going to get back to you, Diana, because mm -hmm. I, I hear, you know, Gideon, you throw me off. Some, what, is, what is your solution? I mean, I, I hear this defeatist attitude, so what happens Excellent. to the Panthers? Uh -oh. What is your, what is, uh -oh. what is your solution? You know what? Our families is the solution. And the way we were trained, and see, when we talk about uh, understanding police and, and how to act be, with police. Mm -hmm. The Southern upbringing taught you how to act around people, period, not just police. See, what we have lost is not the police, but the polite. We have lost manners. We have lost respect. So, Because the imaging so of Oscar white Grant supremacy. Wasn't mannerable. No, no, no. Sean no, Bell no. wasn't mannerable. They will, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no this I mean, is where I was going. The imaging of white supremacy and how they have uh, branded us on the world stage as the poster child of anger and hatred and dissent and evil doings. Therefore, they have Bob's wearing the baseball hats and, you know, falling into this mode that they have so identified as let me hostile. Ask, let, okay, that, so let me ask that question. So you're saying that we should change our, imi our image? We can't what because saying. we don't control uh, the media. Right. Cops should we be more tolerant towards police repression, uh, um, police abuse? Therein we should be, lies the answer. So you think again, we should be tolerant for that stuff? Because of our upbringing in the South, because we were taught but obedience, of, humility, I think that will save the lives of You know what a lot of, of my children. people would call that, especially us in the Panther Party, they would call that bootlicking over Thomas. <laughs> that's they my point. That, and that, respectability that, politics. And that's my point. Right. See, there, what you've actually uh, elucidated upon is the change change in philosophy from where a time when we were colored, and legally we still are, uh -huh. and when we were taught submission, respect, discipline, all these, the humbling effects of being oppressed, right. because we recognize we are, now we've been told, oh, you've been free, you got education, boy, look at what you got, a big house, big car, 
plenty of women. I don't you out there, you ball a baller. And, I mean, and we're going to go to Diane because yeah, I don't want to yeah, yeah, But yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's that, Gideon. I Come think on. just any, any person, mm -hmm. any human being, well, understands that they have the right to freedom. They have the right to self-determination. They have the right mm -hmm. to dignity. They have the right to determine their destiny. How are you going to have the right to all that and be oppressed at the same you, time? You have that right. Now, it yeah. doesn't, no one can take your, no one, no people take your rights. Yes, but they have. Exactly. But you're giving them your rights. Well, you'd no, rather no. be, listen, let me tell you something. You'd rather die, I'd rather die on my feet right. than live on my knees. Hell, you my know creator. What I'm oh. I'm just saying, that's a great you, point. You, but but you, you're about to hit Who's me with the, you're, you're, about to, you're about to hit me with the uh, uh, biblical. Yeah, you're, about him, you're, about him, you're about to hit me with another No, I'm people. asking you a question. Philosophy. Whose philosophy oh. are you espousing? Oh. I'm espousing for right now. Personally, I'm speaking for me, but I'm coming but in a long leader. line. Yeah, in a long line of revolutionaries exactly. who have right, who, who have said well, the same my thing. Revolutionary spirit leader is Yeshua. And he was And you see what happened to him. But he had all power it's in his hand. How he couldn't get himself off that cross. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I, hey, I'm just, it is what it is. Right up. Just, <laughs> this is real. This is how we do it. Let's, let's, let's go. We can I was like <laughs> wanting to get back to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to you, Don, because we'll be back and forth at this. And I, and I think it's an important question about how people uh, struggle for their liberation. Exactly. I think it is. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think one of the things that first to know how to struggle for your liberation is to know, in fact, what the facts are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, and who you're fighting against. And who you're fighting against. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to kind of go back to why it is important that this program be stopped yes. and be mm -hmm. ended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, there are multiple entry points on that. Uh, when we first started this campaign uh, several years ago, we were really directing it towards getting it off of Georgia State's mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. but. As has been mentioned, like the School of the Americas, what the uh, School of the Americas Watch has done is they have been pressuring the U.S. government to stop funding that school. Mm -hmm. But they've gone around the other way, mm. and they've gone to the countries that used to send the soldiers to be brainwashed and torch into torturers and assassins, and they've convinced those uh, presidents, because there's many now progressive mm -hmm. governments, that they shouldn't have their soldiers be trained to be mercenaries for the for U.S. capitalism and imperialism. Exactly. So now we're thinking about, well, can we do that? Can we go to Pooler? <laughs> can we go to Pine City? Can we go or Lake um, Lake City? Lake, uh, mm -hmm. Pine Lake. Pine Lake. There and you go. and the city of Atlanta and Fulton County mm -hmm. and all the rest and launch an educational campaign mm -hmm. that says, we don't want city resources, mm -hmm. city funds, exactly. city police being trained mm -hmm. to be, I mean, I think about it, what if during the height of the South African apartheid regime, mm -hmm. if the city of Atlanta had been sending police mm -hmm. to Johannesburg mm -hmm. <laughs> to learn they probably would have burned Atlanta down. Community mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. I think there was enough political awareness mm -hmm. about what the situation on the ground was mm -hmm. for the majority of people mm -hmm. in South Africa, the South African people, mm -hmm. and this white minority government, mm -hmm. and how the U.S. corporations were um, benefiting, profiting. Right, absolutely. But we don't have that education sufficiently yet well, about how it is the connection between Israel, Israel. the profit mm -hmm. that is generated mm -hmm. by U.S. corporations, mm -hmm. oil companies, technology companies, et cetera. I think one of the things, too, that we wrestle with over here is, is two things with me. First is the uh, Judeo-Christian movement. A lot of us still see, no, no offense, a lot of us still see Israel and the Jewish people as chosen people. Right. It's been psychologically implemented, especially mm -hmm. in Africa here in America's mm -hmm. mind. You know, when you say Jewish, mm -hmm. they back up from it. Mm -hmm. And and taking in the relationship we had back in the day with the NAACP, the founding of the NAACP, mm -hmm. the black and Jewish relationship. I don't think that we have really, like you said, we need an educational campaign to evolve and to get past a lot of these sentiments. Mm -hmm. um, well, if I could interrupt, I, yes, think, I think there's, we definitely should have a, uh, Jewish people are not the issue. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a state. Exactly. It's Zionism. It's a Zionist, Zionism. It's a Zionist exactly. state. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It, so there's a difference between the religion exactly. and a political movement, movement. Mm -hmm. that claims supremacy mm -hmm. exactly. and not domination and mm -hmm. the right to 
grab as much land as it could. So we should separate that out. We, that, well, that's one of the things we have to say. And you did. Thank you did an excellent job. And we try to point that out on the show if you look at previous shows when uh, talking to Mariam and uh, a lot of our um, Palestinian guests when we bring issues and lights to Palestine, to point out the difference between Zionism and our Jewish people. One thing that we're not is anti-Semitic, anti we're anti-oppression. Exactly. The second thing that we're dealing with too when you're looking at um, not just the Judeo-Christian sentiment that a lot of the people have here, um, is also you're looking at Islamophobe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people mm -hmm. don't separate, like right. Mariam has so adequately pointed out one time. When she and for those viewers out there, saying, ain't nobody riding Mariam's tip, man. Quit yeah. leaving all the comments on my YouTube. And Vince, what's yeah. up, right. Vince? What's, Vince up, what's up, baby? <laughs> so we say this. So it's the it's, it's, it's the Islamophobe. And one thing, like Mariam had pointed out, is that you have Christians, you have even Palestinian uh, Jewish yes. people. Yes. You know what I'm Ethiopian saying? So Jews it's mm -hmm. Ethiopian, right. Mm -hmm. So it is a genocide mm -hmm. against a Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. Not that. So we have to get the education campaign that, you know, when they put them on TV, you know, it's just like they did with the war when they was going saying they were looking for a 9/11, looking for Osama bin Laden, and they, and they end up in Iran. Mm. I mean, uh, Iraq. 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 Yeah, they exactly. end up in Iraq. Iraq. Right. I don't know how they got the coalition. <laughs> I don't know how Nobody you went knows. from right. How you went from, but it was a Muslim thing. Wait a minute now. Just they just put, said about ISIS. Right. Wherever ISIS is, Syria, Iran, yeah. we're going to go. We're going right. to go. Right. Same and then what they want to get, but that's Bro. what I mean when they put in this. Uh, mm -hmm. When they put this Islamophobe and then, right. like I said, the sentiment of this right. Judeo-Christian thing of, of, of us still feeling like that that's the Holy Land. True. That this, you know, I still catch a lot of flack, even from my grandma, if I say, you know, I illegal state of Israel. What's yeah. illegal about it? God gave them folks that country, <laughs> you know. that. So we still go through a lot of that. Yeah. Right. So I think an educational program, launching an educational campaign, is going to be instrumental. Mm -hmm. Islamophobia is also really deeply ingrained into American culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, to the point to where people will make casual jokes, you know, com you know, assume, presuming that somebody who is a terrorist is is um, is a Muslim. You know, I've seen jokes like that. I've seen people say, "Oh my God, you know, they're so horrible with their women. They're so this, they're so that." Right. I'm like, the United States is horrible with Thank women you. too. Okay. Thank you. You know, the United States has done everything that you accuse. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that this is freedom of religion here. But one of the epithets that is actually, you know, thrown at the pre at our current president is that he's a Muslim. Right. Mm -hmm. Which really, that shouldn't be a problem. Right. It shouldn't be. Right. But you know, it's really deeply ingrained into our exactly. culture. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, you know, when I think about even some of the stories that I've heard growing up, you know, just even comics making casual jokes about, you know, hijab and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. Yes. It's deeply ingrained into our it culture. Is. So mm -hmm. I feel like we have to push back against that. Mm -hmm. There was um, a, an organization, a very small one, called FIG, Fighting Islamophobia in Georgia. It, mm -hmm. it didn't really last long, but they were really trying to address some of the attacks on mosques mm -hmm. in this country. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I. I, I do understand the concern of some people about anti-Semitism. I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I also want to point out that Islamophobia is well and alive Absolutely. in the United States mm -hmm. and in other countries as mm -hmm. well, so especially in France. Let me ask this question because, Kevin, you've been quiet. Quiet, though. I mean, <laughs> and you're really a power <laughs> broker on this right. set. And you know it, and Thank I you. know it. I just wanted to get your perspective on this issue of the relationship between America and Israel and the police force as a young European male. Sure. I mean, talk to us. Don't be shy. Okay. Well, um, so I, I will say that uh, the the two women here today, uh, Dawn and Diane, have had a huge impact on me personally and my, my political development and my personal development in becoming um, uh, more focused on a lot of issues that are important to both women, people of color, people of LGBT uh, backgrounds. So. A lot of that has helped shape uh, me as, as I am now, as an activist, um, mm -hmm. and some of the work that I do. Um, and so in this process, um, I think Dawn was the first one to mention the, the Gilly program, this exchange between police here and uh, police in Israel and other countries, actually. Mm. Um, when, when I first learned about that, I remember uh, I was like, wow. like. <laughs> So you're saying that our police are trained in Israel. And her first response to me was, I'm really glad I didn't have to explain that to you. And I think for, for white people, people from my background, because I come from a middle, even, even upper class background, um, 
and a lot of people in my community would not uh, associate that. And so that's been something that I've kind of had to fight um, with my upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think one of the most important messages that I would have for uh, anybody, anybody who can identify with that, with not understanding, is that part of, of doing good work to build a better society, a better world, involves constantly educating yourself, re-educating yourself about other people's perspectives mm -hmm. and how, how they view that. Um, with that said, there is a really good opportunity coming up to do that. <laughs> for, so for those of you who mentioned uh, the School of the Americas, this organization, uh, it, it's actually housed at Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, they have a program, uh, November 21st to November 23rd. It's an entire weekend long, and there are people that converge on Columbus, Georgia. And uh, it will happen this November. It's mm -hmm. an annual thing. And uh, activists from around the world actually come and converge, and they discuss all these different issues um, together. And, and there's workshops, and there's actually a wonderful vigil for all the people who have been killed by um, imperialist policy abroad, in, specifically in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And you hear those stories. And this was very, uh, it, it had a great effect on me last year that I went. That was the first time I went. Mm. I'd highly recommend to anyone and um, just Google uh, School of the Americas Watch November Vigil. Mm. Um, as you can see, I'm actually wearing a t-shirt right now. It's <laughs> clothes, wow. School of the Americas, Winsec, and Torture Brandon. Now. Mm. Um, oh, my goodness. See, I didn't so, even know that. <laughs> what is that? Uh, 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 that's uh, Latin, is it? Uh, no, no, this is not Latin. This is, uh, it says Close the School oh, okay, of the Americas. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see. Okay. Now, they've changed the name mm -hmm. to WINSEC, much like, actually, Dawn mentioned this before we started. Uh, oh. You mentioned that they've changed the name, is it of? Uh, Red Dog. Red Dog. The well, Red they Dog changed program. the name after that last uh, situation that came up in the news that really popularized or uh, publicized their existence. Because many people didn't even know that, of course, they popularized killing in America, mm -hmm. period, through the media. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know that they had this school. Wow. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. Oh, um, well, so with that said, I, you know, I want to invite everybody to that. There uh, likely will be some kind of um, ride situation where people can get down there. If mm -hmm. you don't have the means, if you need housing, things like that, those can be set up. And uh, Georgia Peace and Justice Coalition is working on organizing those things for this year. So just go to the website. Um, you can shoot me an email at cool. K-C-A-R-O-N-2. Shoot may not be the right word. <laughs> yeah. anyway, K-C-A-R-O-N-2 at gmail.com. Um, and I'll, I, you know, I'll try to help coordinate things, whatever. But that'll be happening this year. And um, actually, there will be a discussion about how to connect all these struggles to anti-militarism, anti-imperialism that um, our organization will be working to, to do. And both of these two have done a lot of work on that. With that said, uh, bringing back to the, the Gilly program, we talked about you know, what, what people can do. And I'm curious if, um, if Diane and then maybe Dawn could talk about what has been done in the past what was the response from what Georgia State? What was the is. response? We're coming up on the five oh, minute oh, mark. My bad. Oh, oh, that's, good. that's good. Yeah, well, oh, we're going to have to do Because we definitely, have a lot to Yeah, say. definitely talk to some. Get yeah, this yeah, again. Yeah. We have to have a continuation of this. Okay. So we'll talk to the super producer, get a continuation. <laughs> but we want, we want at least take two minutes Thank in the closing out. Mm -hmm to um, you know, kind of bring it, and we'll definitely try to have this on again, because I'm sitting here like this, and I'm just having to look at my, like, man, that's the freaking hour. <laughs> you know, usually I'm running my mouth somewhere. Man, I've just been enthralled. Okay, but. If, I have to say, I do a radio show that's an hour long, too, and I find that the time flies just, by. Right, right, when you have when, a uh, real interest. When you have real Where, interest. where? Uh, yeah, I send up, yeah. I'm on WRFG 89.3 Oh, yeah, I got fam um, over there. Uh -huh. What time? And what time? I'm on Mondays from 4 to 5. Dawn What's has a program. And I do a program called the Labor Forum. Okay. I'm a retired auto worker, and I... From, from 4 to 5? You retired mm -hmm. early, though, didn't you? That's... that's Thank you. <laughs> 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 after, after 30 years. <laughs> and, um, in the afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm, drive time. 89.3 FM. Yes. Um, so, so just to go back to every campaign, every progressive action, you know, has a whole variety of tactics that we use sure. over and over again. Mm -hmm. Educational programs, films, events like this show, mm -hmm. petitions, leafleting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. programs, trying to get a meeting with powers that be, sure. demonstrations, mm -hmm. sit-ins, <laughs> you know. 
So essentially, we've done a lot of that in our attempt to try to get the program taken off from Georgia State. Mm. We'd have to say that, it, you should know that there was extreme pushback by the state. Certainly. They essentially have declared that the Gilly, the law enforcement that goes on this mm -hmm. exchange, that's a state secret now. Right. Mm -hmm. they've, mm -hmm. they've essentially <laughs> said, mm -hmm. we're not gonna let you know. Yeah. So, uh, so that's a little bit why we're moving, perhaps moving to this other direction, mm -hmm. going to the local authorities that have the ability to stop sending Georgia police. Kevin, since you like a, a host, we're going to skip you. That's fine. That's fine. Because <laughs> you come back on. You, hey, man, you know you get your questions in. You come back it's on. It's all good. Don, okay. you under? Um, I was one of the students that met with uh, university president uh, Mark Becker. And uh, one of the things that I learned from that meeting was n not to underestimate him. And I feel like maybe to some extent that we did. Um, the thing that I didn't realize was, is this man a, an ardent supporter of this program? Or is he simply in place trying to maintain, you know, the status quo with regard? That wasn't very clear. But what was clear was that even though we were students who had petitioned and attempted to deliver petitions to the president and his office, and actually we were told that he did not meet with students. Um, later on, he said that was not true, but, you know, I have ways of proving that that is true. Um, and then later on, you know, we were talking and basically we, we had a meeting with the president of the university and their lawyer and somebody from student affairs. And what became clear was that even though we were able to get across our points, you know, there were, there were three students and a community member in the room, that the president was not open to discussing this issue. Mm. That our demands were basically to shut the program down and to investigate. But we were not even given the information about the program. You know, we, you know in a public university, wow. they were talked about as if they were students. Mm. But then it's just like, I know if I was in a program on campus, people would have access to that program. Right, exactly. And yet the people don't have that. So I can expand more on that the next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have. Kev, they cut off with him. And would you like to send a shout out or say anything? Uh, <laughs> you know what? I just want to say uh, thanks for, for bringing this issue no, to light. because brother, there's thanks some, for brokering this. Yeah, yeah well, it's no is. problem. There's definitely some more organizing that's starting to take hold right now mm -hmm. around this issue. So hopefully I'll be able to get information to you and your viewers about that. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank everyone. Gideon, did you want to oh, no, take yeah. it down? We want to thank everyone for coming out, man. High Powered Show. You can catch us on the Arena YouTube, all one word, no spaces, the Arena 2013. Just, you know, I got to applaud everybody for coming on, bringing this information. We're going to try to bring it back again to continue this thing because we didn't get enough. Black Sun in the easy for cheese. Salute to Black Sun. Yeah, yeah, Sister yeah. Be safe. The whole, you know, the whole That's production, right. everybody at uh, Comcast will let us do our thing and rock That's our right. thizzle. That's right. Again, our panelists, great panelists. Yes. Woo. My man wow. Gideon. Uh -oh. Got your problem. Servant. The servant. You know, Black Sun call you the king. Yeah. 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 And everybody, Kevin, for they bringing this thing together.